Hi guys, welcome to today's video about Capture Data Change, also known as CDC. Today we are going to use Azure Data Factory to capture changes. In this video, we are going to create two tables, one source table and one target table, enable CDC in an Azure SQL database, insert some data, and use data flow in Azure Data Factory to load the data into the target table. After the initial run, we are going to insert a new record, update an existing record, and delete one record as well. The second time we run our data flow that has CDC enabled, it will update the target table with the captured changes. Before we begin, let's see what the documentation says about CDC. Capture Data Change is a software process that identifies and tracks changes to data in a database. CDC provides real-time or close to real-time movement of data by moving and processing data continuously as a new database event occurs. Changes are captured by using a capture process that reads changes from the transaction logs and places them into the corresponding change tables. These change tables provide a historical view of the changes made over time in the source tables. CDC functions enable the change data to be consumed easily and systematically. Customers who want to enable CDC on Azure need to know that they need a SQL database which is higher than standard three tier. This picture describes how CDC works behind the scenes. Once we enable CDC, the SQL Server agent captures change data in the source tables and store them into transaction logs. Then the scheduler invokes store procedures to periodically capture and clean up the CDC tables. So essentially the capture process inserts the change data into the change tables. We have the query functions, which data consumers use to access the change data. There are two functions, one that returns all change table entries within a defined interval and one that only returns the, each distinct row changed in this interval. To support net change queries, we need to have a primary key in the source table. Then the ETL process fetches the data from the change table using these query functions. Therefore, we only get the delta data. In our example, we are going to enable CDC at data flow level. Data Factory automatically detects the changes in the source table since the last run and gets only the changes. Now, if you ask me why not to use incremental load instead of CDC, then the answer would be is that you don't, when you use CDC, you don't need to have a date or an ID column in the source table to track the discrepancies because the CDC technology does this for us. Okay, let's move to Azure. I have already created a SQL database, an Azure SQL database. I'm in the query editor, and now we are going to create two tables, one for the source data, one for the target data. We have two columns, an ID column and an email. We define the ID as the primary key for both tables. Now we need to enable CDC you can enable CDC using this command sys.sp underscore cdc underscore enable underscore db. You will find those commands in, uh, on Azure documentation. Let's enable CDC for this particular table, for the source table. We have to define the source schema, the source name, the table name, actually the role name, CDC admin, and support net changes. Be careful, don't forget that. It has to be equal to one. And then let's insert some values here. We inserted three records. Let's see our tables now. Let's expand this one. And as you can see, we have the source table here, the target table. In the source table, we should have three records, exactly. Uh, and here in the underscore CT table, this is where the changes are stored. As you can see, it has all the data. You can see all those CDC tables. Here you have the uh, start LSN, which is essentially, you know, like the log sequence number, which identifies changes that were committed within the 
same transaction and order those orders those transactions. I think we are good to go here. Um, let's go to Azure Data Factory now. Let's create a data flow. Here, let's create a data set. New data set. Azure SQL database. Link service. I have already created a link service. And let's see the tables. Here we have the source table. We point to the source table. We click OK. This is going to create a data set that points to our source table. Allow schema drift. That's fine. Source options. Now, here we need to click on the change data capture. SQL Server CDC because we have enabled the CDC on, on the table. Scroll here, scroll down here, and select full on the first run, then incremental. So we are going to read all the data from the beginning and then only the changes. But first, we need to perform the initial load, right? Under projections, you will see the schema here. And in the data preview, let's, let's enable the debug mode to see the data. Meanwhile, let's create a sync. And that would be our target table. Now, here, instead of a data set, we need to click on the inline and point to an Azure SQL database. Then select the link service, SQL database 2. Allow schema drift, that's fine. And in the settings, let's refresh so we can get the schema and the table name. OK, let's scroll down to DB, uh, DBO and then select the target table. Update method, allow insert, allow delete, allow absurd, allow update. And here we need to specify the column. So the key column, right? For us, it's ID because it's our, our unique identifier in the table, in the data. We don't need to use a temp uh, DB here. Under mappings, uh, let's click on that. You will see we map uh, its column directly. We don't perform any changes. Data preview, click on refresh. And you will see the data here that we have in the source. If everything works fine, right? It is fetching the data. Yep, we have three records for John, Bob, and Joe. And I think we are okay with that, right? So let's publish this data flow. Actually, before we publish this data flow, we need a pipeline. And drag and drop the data flow, uh, data flow two for me. And under settings, you will see the check uh, point key which uh, essentially is used to set the checkpoint when data flow is used for change data capture. It's a GUID unique identifier that identifies this pipeline. You can research it if you click the override button here. And uh, let's add dynamic content and you can specify your checkpoint key, right? We don't need to do that now. Parameters, no, that's fine. I think we are okay with that. Let's validate. That's fine. Validation was successful. Let's publish the changes. And now we are going to run uh, our pipeline here. And this will pick up the changes from the source table and store the data into the target table. 
Okay, here we are. You can see, click on the glasses and you will see the data flow running. Great, it picked up three records, exactly what we expected. Let's go back into our database and select from the target table. On target. Let's see, we expect three records. Perfect. Now let's insert a value, then update uh, a record with ID3 and then delete one record. So we performed three changes. Now back into our data factory, if we run our pipeline again, it should pick up those changes. Let's see. The data flow is running. Okay, yep, it finished three records. Now if we go, if we reread the target table again, we should see the new uh, data. So yeah, we have inserted one record, record four. We have updated record three with this email, jawtest uh, at gmail.com, and we deleted record with ID one. Perfect. This is what we wanted. Now, we can um, we can have multiple sources and multiple targets in a data flow. Let's go into our data flow, click on here, and then select sync again. Uh, this time though, we are going to move the data, the captured data, into a delta lake because this is a very common scenario. You get the data from a uh, database and you store the data into another database or you store the data into a delta lake and that's even more common scenario nowadays click on inline click on the data set type scroll down select delta select a link service here that points to our blob storage allow schema drift that's fine then under settings, specify the folder, the container. Let's call this CDC. Click on OK. Perfect. And select again the key column, which is the ID, unique identifier. And mappings. Click on the auto map here. That's fine. It works fine. Click on refresh to see the data. And also, we can have multiple sources, right? One cool thing that we can do here is add a source right here, add source, and let's point to Azure Blob Storage and select, let's create a new data set actually that points to Azure Blob Storage and it uh, accepts CSV files, click on continue, with the same schema as uh, the schema that we have in our tables. First row as header, click on container, let's call this source, click OK. Allow schema drift, that's fine, source options, we don't need to, well actually we have to change, uh, click here, the capture the change data capture and full on the first round and incremental. This is fine. Data preview. Okay, now we don't have anything, but let's add a sync a destination, and that would be again our database. So click on Azure SQL database, click on your link service here settings again the same target table allow insert this time we are going to keep it like that otherwise if you uh, if you want to perform also deletions and uh, updates you need to use a, an extra step and that would be an 
all the row here. I'm not going to do that now because it's more complicated. Uh, let's keep it simple for this one. And I think we are okay with that, right? So we have, let me zoom out a bit. And you can see we have one source that points to two destinations, one in to the target data uh, to the target table in the database and one to the delta lake so simultaneously we are going to uh, write all those changes that we pick up when something happens in the source table and write them in and uh, and move all those changes all this capture with to cap all those capture changes to the table and to the target table and to the delta lake and here we have added another source which is a container essentially and every time that we upload a csv file with the same schema as the table schema in the source it's going to perform it's going to copy the data and save the changes into the target table perfect let's see an example like that right let's publish all let's go into our storage account in the source i will upload a csv file now upload let me upload the csv file and that will be this one okay here this is the csv file if you click on edit you will see the data it's 50 and harriet at gmail.com so this record here that we just we just show has to be inserted into the target table meanwhile let's uh let's make some changes here in the database so let's insert let's say another record with id6 and that would be the test gmail right now if we insert that let's go into our data factory now and run the pipeline we expect now cdc to pick up this insert this inserted record and save the data into the target table but also into our delta lake and plus this record here in our csv file that is under this container should be stored into the target table as well the pipeline finished successfully so let's see the data into our target table and yep we can see record with id6 test at gmail.com this is the one that we inserted in the source table and then record with id50 is coming from the csv file that we uh, in our container in the source container here this is this is coming from this csv file right and also as you can see in the cdc container we have a delta file here parky file in delta format that has the uh the changes right how can you see those changes there is a fast way to do that so if you go and create a new data flow then add source and then inline select delta choose a link service azure blob storage in this case source select your container with the delta uh, files and click on data preview refresh and you'll see the data that we just inserted into the source table it is fetching the data we expected one record and yep we got one record perfect now there is this change data capture preview 
but it is only used uh, for the incremental changes, not for the initial uh, load. You cannot perform an initial load using this feature here, but it's good. Usually what happens is that we perform an initial load and then we use this preview in order to continue with the incremental changes. It's a lot simpler to set up. You don't have to build data flows or pipelines and it uses a smaller compute size, meaning that it's a lot cheaper than the data flow, than the data flow CDC, right? Usually we use a copy activity to perform the initial load and then the, this CDC option to continue with the incremental changes. A good example is actually, let's say that we have this source container and we have already you know upload the data but let's say that we want to upload another csv file with new data and those new data should be written here in the target container in delta format i think it's pretty good uh, tool to use when only to pick up changes when like a file arrives and so uh, this sort of you know tasks right so let's say the source type would be a csv file pointing to azure blob storage let's say the source container would be our, our source here click on continue target table would be target type would be delta and we point to another container the target container let's point to the target container perfect click on continue and this now, as you can see, we have the source table, which is actually a CSV file in our source container and the target table, which is the target container. You have the automat here. If you want, uh, you can play around with the schema, make some changes, disable automap, and it's going to load the schema. And there's also a preview button. Okay, so let's publish those changes. Yeah, you cannot have, and let's wait for the load schema here, the data flow, we don't need this data flow anymore. The schema is being loaded. Okay, two mappings, zero. Let's see the mappings. Yep, we have the, we have direct mapping here, email, points to email and ID points to ID, but you can also, you know, perform some uh, calculations here and transformations. You can use advanced if you want to perform, uh, if you want to open the expression builder and perform more um, complicated transformations. But for now, let's keep it simple. Publish all. Let's publish our CDC pipeline here. This new feature is actually quite cool. However, I suggest you use data flows for more, you know, for if you want to perform an initial load and then picking up the changes. This is uh, actually this is pretty good because you have the late. You can set the latency here. You can I uh, use real time. Uh, latency instead of uh, intervals of 15 minutes and whatnot. Uh, it's not. It's not exactly real time. It's uh, actually close to real time. It takes about uh, one minute to pick up the changes. The first time that when you start the when you start the CDC pipeline, I suggest you wait a few minutes the first time uh, when you start this CDC process, you can click on here and you will see uh, this uh, CDC process running, status is running, and in a few minutes it will pick up any changes. Uh, it does not perform an initial load, right? So, but if we go into our container here in our short container, let's upload another a CSV file with one record and that would be this one 
Okay, now we have this CSV file here with this data, two records. So we expect the CDC pipeline to pick up two records and store them as delta files in our target container. There it is. We picked up those changes, two changes actually. So if we go into our target container here, we expect to see delta files. This is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video about CDC and you found it insightful. You will find CDC incredibly helpful if you are a data engineer. Picking up only the incremental changes from source to target is quite a common scenario. Click the like button and subscribe to the channel for new videos. Thank you.